So, for most people, when we start with Sanjin Kata, fold the arms, tighten. Good position, right leg in front, good toe position. Elbows in. Hand comes back into the chamber. Do not raise the shoulder. Comes back, keep that shoulder down and tight. Keep your lats and the muscles in your back tight. Two schools of thought. One, rotate towards the end. It's a much more basic school of thought. Two, much more difficult school of thought is as you start to move, your hand starts to rotate. And now the complexity is created in keeping your arm against your rib cage. So here it's easy. If I'm here and I say to myself, my pinky, the ribs, they must rub totally along here until the rib meets the elbow, then my hand can start to turn and then my arm will turn out naturally and I can focus a second. Front two knuckles, aiming for those floating ribs. Okay, that's easier. It's more beginner. More advanced, as I've been told, is the idea of one, and as you move, your hand starts to rotate. And now you're trying to keep the arm in contact without raising the shoulder. And this is the difficulty one you're trying to do. Once the arm is out, remember the whole time this arm is solid. It is not moving, it is locked into place. If somebody comes and tests this arm, the arm shouldn't be moving because this should all be tight. When I bring the arm back, I'm not concentrating on my hand. There are many schools that do this. They create a block by whipping the arm around. More traditional gorgeous schools tend to be a lot more subtle. The elbow comes back to that rib. And when the elbow comes back, it's going to rotate the arm. You can see my arm rotating. So when that happens, my hand pulls back into its position. So it's economy of movement. So I'm not making a big movement. There is the subtlety of the block thing. So I'm using my foot adjusting on the floor as these muscles tighten up and go from the floor. Big toes, toes, tightening through the lower leg, round the knees, adductors, abductors, pelvis, body, and I'm in my next position. Repeat now, right hand punch, same principle. So adjust, move forward, overdo it, tighten, and lock yourself onto the ground, and left hand. Now, when we get to the third step, the kata is quite easy, we have three steps, at the end of the third step, left hand is punching, so pull back, then we repeat, right, left, right, left. So on the third step, there are five punches. Okay? That's the easy part. When we get to the end of the fifth punch, we leave the hand out, and then we have a move very similar to Chen Shou or say something, we bring the hands up, where the hands kind of come together, and then they turn and end up in this position. Now, don't do this. Keep your fingers together, your thumbs in. Your hand position is the same as that. Punch again. Open your fingers and just press. ever so slightly. The arm should have a gradual drop as it moves down. All the way. It should be nice and easy. And when I am in this position, I'm not just going through the process of pulling back and pulling my hands out. There is a lot of sensitivity in the body. Very similar to that tightening the back on the bottom camera and adjusting and tightening all the muscles. So imagine you've got all of those muscles working and now we're in this position. So one, as I do this, I want to pull my elbows in slightly 
lift my hands up a little bit and I want to, because I'm opening my hands, I want to start bringing my fingers together, thumbs in, and then I'm going to rotate them out to you. And there's an inhalation and an exhalation at this point. Okay? Then I'm going to start, I'm going to make a fist, and I'm going to pull by bringing my elbows in, and I'm going to rotate. So you can see I'm starting to rotate. And I'm going to pull tightly back. Do not allow yourself to do this. Concentrate on elbows parallel. Expose the chest. Open, out, rotate. In, out, in, and out. Total number of movements, three movements. So we're in this position, change of position. One, two, and three. And then simply step back, so right foot goes back, right hand comes up for the first part of the washing care, block out. Step back with the left, left hand over, block out. Bring the hand down, bring the feet together, up and down. The whole time during Sanjin Kata, we're really trying to get everything tight from the neck downward. We don't want to tighten around the throat because when we tighten the throat too much and we constrict it too tightly, as we're pushing the air through our vocal cords, we're going to start creating problems. And those problems are medical problems. They end up with damaged vocal cords. And um, to be quite honest, we're in violation of self-preservation, which part of our Dojo Kun says we need to take care of our health. So it's not a great health reason to do this. Yeah, you sound very loud, and very strong, but the strength of the breathing doesn't come from squeezing out through the throat. The strength of the breathing comes from abdominal control, lung control, and your entire upper body being in a totally compressed state, which means the air can only be let out very slowly. And because of the total compression, the pipes that lead from here outward are also under compression. So they're not going to allow a massive flood of air out, and that's what's going to create this kind of slow, kind of puncture type sound. And this is the only way I can explain it. All right, there are a lot of people, and even I, I grew up in a world where there was a lot of extremely heavy, heavy breathing. This is one of the few places where Goju allows its breathing to be a little bit more heavy and a little bit more centered on your body. Remember, you need to do sanction around what you can do, not around what uh, the Judah and Ten Stan who has been practicing sanction for 60 years can do. We're in different leagues. The Judan is in a totally different league that we are aspiring to. The little yellow belt who's looking at the Shodan is aspiring to something. The Shodan who's looking at the Gordan is aspiring to something. And we need to try and improve over time. Sanchen is a lifelong study. Sanchen is not ever, don't ever consider it. Learn the kata, get it right in three years. Lifelong study with potential, the cornerstones of what Goju is really about. So, back to my kata. And we're going to talk a little bit about the breathing. So I'll maybe go back a little bit further so you can see a little bit better.
So, basic idea of Sanchen getting through the cutter. I think the bottom camera has just run out of space. Hopefully we got everything. I was talking about what happens here. So when I do this, my hands are here, my elbow coming towards my ribs, hand up and then down and you can see my arm rotate. My elbow goes from being directly underneath to slightly outward and the arms taking on the elliptical shape. Okay, when I pull back, I want to bring this elbow, which is now, technically speaking, outside, I want to bring that in. So that's why I grab, and then I want to rotate that arm in. And the logic behind this is if you grab on something and pull like this, your arms do this. If I pull my arms here, my whole body is working. So now I'm pulling with my entire body. Chamber, flat, normal fist. Open, out, and rotate. So that's a diagnostic on this movement. In this position, one, two, flat, elbows. Open, feel, rub. Rub, 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 rotate. Okay? So that covers these movements. Is one setup and three times. Okay. My washi uke, depending on the school, depending on who's teaching, depending on how big they want the movement to be, can be from a very, very small movement to a much bigger movement. Um, my movement may be somewhat cropped, like quite extensively cropped. And my logic is, I don't want anything outside of the frame of my body, and I definitely don't want a lot of fetching. I grew up doing a lot of fetching, in other words, getting my hand all the way here, and then having to block there. Having a wrist that blocked Chudan Uke here, um, the one point in my life, a Gedan with a pull and then a release, um, all these different eclectic versions. The rule of thumb is do what your sensei says. All right, and if uh, you're looking at me as your sensei, um, then we do what we're going to try and do what Sensei in Okinawa says and we're going to work towards it and for my family at OGKK if I'm not quite there yet please bear with me so simple things palm flattened concentrate bottom palm pinky side press forward don't let your hand twist please do not do this this fingers in thumbs in elbow slightly bent and again look where my elbow is it's on that floating rib again. Hand position is literally the same as the hip. Top hand, palm, concentrate on the thumb in this case, elbow in on that floating ribs, fingers in. So we're looking at this position. Yes, some schools, slightly other schools. I'm trying to concentrate so much on that, when I rotate that elbow in, hand there. Degree of extension. I want my hands to be on the same vertical line. I do not want one hand ahead of the other. I want the same hand, same vertical line, and I want my body grounded. Okay, so when I move, this would be the last one. I want this feeling. That feeling of touching the ribs when the hands come to chamber. I want to rub on the ribs and a little uh, quirk maybe is that my hands come slightly in and then go slightly out of the elbow pops to the front pops into the front and the hand does that okay but please don't this is too far everything in the frame of your body the more this hand is directly vertical better 
Not so good, better. <laughs> Can't do it this way. As much as you can. Alright, so that is the general overview of the cutter. The cutter does have a slow, long inhale and exhale combination. It has a slow, long inhalation and at some point a slightly fast exhalation. It has got short and short. It has got short and long. And it has an irregular exhalation, which is the end of the cutter. It's one of the things that people look at when somebody does such and they go, what are they up to? Now, my logic is I've exhaled, breathe in, and I'm exhaling. When I get down to the bottom, I'm kind of taking a short <gasps> inhalation because I need to force all this air out if I've done this right. So exhale, 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 short inhalation, exhale. And then I'm going to imagine I'm taking a sponge and I'm going to try and give it a squeeze, give it another squeeze, give it another squeeze. And that squeezing is coming from my thorax, from my ribs, from my entire body pulling down. So you should get The exhalations at the end should not result in This is not the point. The idea is that you are actually squeezing out the last of the bad air. What is good air, what is bad air is quite simple. You put your fingers over your, in front of your face and you blow and it's cold. That's good air. That's the air we want inside. When you blow from the bottom of your lungs and it comes out, it'll be warm and sticky. That's because that air has been inside for a while. And that's what we're using, we're venting out. And in doing this, we're actually trying to force the body to vent out all the older air that's the residual volume, good anatomical term. The residual volume in the lungs and we're trying to replenish it with nice cool fresh air and in the process what we're doing is we're creating a saturation of oxygen in the human body which is one of the good points about doing sanjan kata my final points last minute or so before i shut this all down sanjan kata is the young person's kata and you work on it at different degrees or different levels as you go older. If you're starting karate in your later life, please be very careful if you have any blood pressure issues, blood sugar issues. Um, coronary issues. You need to take it easy. And the reason I'm putting this on the interweb. It's because I have an 83 year old yellow belt in my dojo. He does not do sanction the way the rest of the dojo does. He goes through the motions because if we put his heart under too much strain, we will be checking our ability to do CPR. It's that simple. We need to make sure we look after our members according to their physical capabilities, their health. So that's the health advisory at the end of this. If you're younger and fitter and a little bit more capable, you need to do the kata with a lot more intensity. Once again, thank you for joining me. I hope you get something from the videos. I know I have much room for improvement in my own karate. Um, and hopefully we can touch sides and we can move forward. Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you very much for joining me. Sayonara.